What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we're checking out the new Frostbite Assault Battle Pass. Now, the developers did their best today in their live stream, but they don't speak English, so it's kind of difficult to communicate in English what everything does. So, that's where I come in. Let's take a look at the Battle Pass here. The first couple of rewards are always kind of garbage, but at level 8, you get two of these Icebreaker Bumpers. This is a massive metal bumper, which is a 5x6x4. These are all the connecting points, and the special features it has is 80% resistance to melee and ram damage and 40% bonus to ram damage. And this is what it looks like on your vehicle. You can basically just mount them next to each other, which is crazy. So it is smaller than the freight train plow because it's one pin smaller or thinner. And it is not as heavy as a freight train. It weighs 1,242 kilograms. The freight train is still 1,700 kilograms. That's crazy. And it's also a bit smaller than the, um, the train plow, the normal train plow, which is still 952 kilograms. But this is just a little bit heavier because it's a little bit more durability as well. So if you want, you can do something like this. Not really recommended, but <laughs> I think it looks funny. So yeah, that is at level 8. At level 9, you get some more lighters. Yes, the lighters are back. We don't have bearings anymore. At level 10, the rest of the levels is nothing special. At level 40, you do get access to cast right corner and cast left corner, which looks something like this. You can put another one here on the side as well. Looks like a 4x4x4 four by four by four panel. And it has special features like 35% resistance to bullet damage, 15% resistance to thermal damage, 15% resistance to energy damage, and 50% resistance to cryogenic damage. And it looks like this on your build. Just kind of interesting. I believe you can mount it like this because it has a little dip. Yep, you can mount it like this because of uh, the little dips, which is kind of cool. Maybe you can use it to like protect weapons or something. Yep, that is kind of cool. Maybe you can move, mount the plow in the middle. Who knows? I'm going to quickly go back to the big bumper, the icebreaker. This one does not have access to cryogenic resistance. Just wanted to check that. That's unfortunate. It would be cool if we had a special big bumper that has access to that. But yeah, a shame. At level 15, you get a new paint thermal cladding. Looks like some kind of... Um, crazy room padding <laughs> at level 17 you get a new hologram the glaciation which looks something like this whoa oh that's kind of cool if you have two of them on your vehicle <laughs> kind of like an arm like an ice arm and at level 18 you get your first new weapon the Jotun. so this thing is basically like the incinerator it does explosion damage and periodic damage fire rate is pretty low so that means the reload is going to be long effective range is pretty high accuracy is eh. i know these graphs don't matter but I like to look at them. Max ammo is 10 rounds. This one is upgraded, so durability is 554. Energy drain is 6. Whoa, is 6 energy? Oh, yeah, incinerator 6 energy as well. Mass 611. And the perk says leaves a puddle of refrigerant at the site where the shell explodes, which freezes the parts of all armored vehicles that get into it, as well as reduces the power and speed of their cabins by 33%. The one you get in the battle pass is upgraded for more durability, faster reload time, and refrigerant puddle lifetime increased by 2 seconds these are the parameters for the normal yotun and the upgrades for the future are durability less mass and resistance damage refrigerant puddle radius oh i think this one's gonna be nice reload time reload time is also pretty good we have projectile speed ammo reserves and the refrigerant puddle lifetime increased by two seconds so on my incinerator i personally have durability refrigerant or puddle radius and projectile speed those are really nice so i'm assuming for the yotun you you're gonna want the same thing now during the developers live stream i was wondering if the kami cabin perk would negate the effects of cryogenic stuff never got a reply so we're gonna try it out today so let's put a puddle here activate kami perk you still get damaged or but you don't get heated so let's drive in it again this is without the kami perk and you get heated completely so i'm wondering let's put a puddle right here activate kami perk Huh, it doesn't look like we are getting cold, but if we drive in it now, yeah, we do get frozen. So that's nice! The Kami perk, or the Kami cabin perk works against cryogenic stuff. That is wonderful news. All right, so next thing I want to try out is let's see how fast or how much speed we lose if we drive in a cryogenic puddle. We are at 117, and we drop to under 100. So what I want to see is if our speed drops if the cami perk is active because that's like a whole new thing all right here we go activating cami perk yeah you still lose speed that's unfortunate so the negative speed status effect does still apply but you just don't get frozen 
Hmm. Let me double check just to be sure. Activating Cami perk. Yeah, you still lose the speed even with the perk active. So you don't get frozen, but you do lose the speed. Now, something else I was wondering is if the fire damage stacked with the ice damage. The developer said kind of. So I want to check out something. This is with cryo stuff. This is the damage we're getting. It's not going to be a professional test, by the way. I just want to see how much damage we're getting. Around 500. Now we got the incinerator. Does way more periodic damage. Looks like around 14 hundo. And if we do both. If we get dealt more than... Yeah, it definitely stacks. It definitely stacks a bit. So that is all interesting stuff to see. Another thing is, they said that if both puddles are active on the same place, and yeah, you still get damage, you still get a speed debuff. All right, so that is interesting. And you also get heated. So if people shoot you, you'll still get 100% more damage. So stacking these could still be beneficial. Or combining these, I mean. But of course, we'll have to do more testing because with the cryo flamethrower or cryo thrower, they said that combining them with the remedy won't work, but we'll test that in the future. So that is the Yotun. Very interesting stuff. Very, very interesting weapon. Next up, we have a normal ventilation outlet. Durability is nice. Oh, it looks like all the Hyperborea stuff has resistance to cryo damage. That is cool. And um, that guy made a joke about USB-C ports. <laughs> So same as the last structural part, you get the same types of resistances. This one's a nice part. I believe it is a 4x8x1. Pretty big panel. I like it. Level 21, you get access to the Rune of Battle paint, which looks interesting. At level 25, you get access to a ship search light decor item, which looks cool. Someone asked if it was a rotatable light, so let's check that out. Oh, look at that. It does rotate. Now... For some reason, I cannot freeze it like my outlook. My gun stops if I wrote it, but I cannot look at the... <laughs> I cannot look at it. What the hell? Can I be fast enough? Oh, yep, there it is. If we're fast enough... Yep, there it is. There's a the light. Kind of lame, but <laughs> there's a the light. Now, Crossout does not have the graphics to project light uh, effects, so that is unfortunate. But the light rotates, so whoever was asking that, it does rotate. So there you go. Level 26, you get a blueprint, and at level 27, you get the new ammo box, the Rune 1 which only works as ammunition for the new chameleon and boosters. So the first thing that came to mind, hold on, let's let's check out the parameters first. So increases the initial amount of invisibility reserves for the module Yeti by 78%, as well as booster fuel reserves by 125%. Damage upon destruction is medium. Durability is decent and mass is decent as well. The one you get in the battle pass has an upgrade for less mass and module efficiency, which is good. These are the possible upgrades for the rune one. Personally, I would go for more durability and module efficiency. It is a pretty small module, fits in perfectly in the slot of the new Yeti Chameleon. At level 31, you get access to the snow cutter right and left, which looks something like this. It also has like some kind of dip where you can mount it onto stuff, maybe like a weapon protection. That's that's going to be nice. Looks like a tool by four by four. Very nice. Looks like they don't want to give bumpers cryo resistance. This bumper also has 80% resistance to melee and ramp damage and 40% bonus to ram damage. Durability is pretty nice and mass is decent. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good stuff. And on your build, it looks something like this. Like I mentioned, it has like a little dip so you can mount it inside of a thing or you can just mount it in the front like this and have a little gap for protection of something. It's basically, I believe, you get four of them in total, I see. And it's kind of like a one of those dudes plows. Yeah, there you go. You can have four of them or you protect four weapons potentially. Kind of looks like a beak or something. After the bumpers, you don't really get anything special until level 35, which is the Yeti Stealth. <laughs> I was going to say Chameleon. It's the Yeti Stealth. Yeah, it's not Chameleon Mark III. It's just Stealth. So this is the Stealth module that you can activate and deactivate at your own discretion. And the new ammo box type thing fits in here perfectly. They also mentioned something about a bootstrap fitting in here perfectly. Let's take a look at the perk for a second. Upon manual deactivation, the vehicle will become visible in one second. And the cooldown before the next activation will be reduced by 50%. Only one invisible module can be installed on a vehicle. The one you get from the battle pass has more durability and invisibility reserves increased by 15%. So instead of 30 seconds of active time, we get 35 seconds of active time. 
Now there's something I obviously wanted to check out. So this is the Yeti. Whoa, it's so massive though. It is massive. This is the Rune one, which fits in there perfectly. And what about the bootstrap? They mentioned something about that. Yeah, it fits, I guess it fits. And then you can maybe add a rune on the side like so. But that's going to be one big ticking time bomb, if you ask me. So such a big, <laughs> such a big thing to have on your build. Now, the thing I wanted to try out is can you be invisible for the whole duration of the match? Now, I don't have access to more than one rune, but you can add more than one rune on your build. Now, the first thing that popped into mind is what about the still wind? Can I cloak up and shoot nonstop? Ah, uh, no, you cannot. You do get kicked out of cloak if you use the still wind. Interesting. I wonder if you can add so much runes you can be invisible for like five minutes. <laughs> All right, so you stay invisible until you shoot. Takes a couple of seconds to get out of cloak. Kind of strange it doesn't work with the still wind. So they mentioned the invisibility effect after a shot lasts for three seconds doesn't affect other ways of deactivating the invisibility. I could have sworn the still wind had a different perk where you could just fire it while invisible for infinite amount of time. Maybe they changed it for, you know, this module because it would be busted. But yeah, seems like the perk of the still wind is kind of garbage if this is the case. So anyways, they mentioned that you can activate and then deactivate will become visible in one second. So that's the one second. And then they mentioned on the live stream, you need to wait eight seconds before you can cloak up again, which is quite long. Yep. So you can do it on will, but you still have to wait for some kind of reload. I do wonder, they mentioned that the Cheetah engine won't affect it, but what about a reload module? Let's check it out. Now, does it look like the reload module does anything for it? <laughs> so that is the new stealth module, the Yeti. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. We'll have to see how this one plays out. At level 36, you get four more structural parts. The cast half arc which is, I think you can put right in the middle of some of those uh, panels we unlocked earlier. Pretty nice. It's a, it's a full wedge, holy smoke. And this part also gets access to cryo resistance, decent durability to mass ratio. At level 37, you get a glacier paint, which yeah, definitely looks cool. I couldn't really see what it was on the stream, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. After level 37, you get nothing special until you reach level 44, which is the new weapon, the Narwhal Cryogenic cannon or cryo cannon now i know the graph here is not accurate but i'm still gonna use it so the power score is 2400 hit damage is pretty high explosion damage is pretty high fire rate is decent not the best so it's actually pretty slow effective range is good ammo capacity is 14 and accuracy is meh it has 100 percent penetration ability durability is 993 durability that's actually kind of cool energy drain 6 and mass is 1279 kilos and the perk says the projectile explosion freezes enemy sparks by 20 percent the weapon deals increased damage when hitting frozen parts. Maximum bonus is 100%. And the normal you get from the battle pass has less mass, faster reload, and faster projectile speed. So this mass is not the original one. The original Norwal weighs 1,535 kilos. So that's it's a little bit heavier, yes. Now, something I want to check out is if it's the same size as a Tsunami. Appears to be very... Oh, it's actually a lot smaller than the Tsunami. Yep. It's a bit smaller than the Tsunami. I do wonder if they have the same projectile speed. Jesus Christ. Almost the same. Almost the same. That's a lot of kick. Definitely has a faster reload than... Oh my god, it rotates too. What? Oh, damn. That's cool. Oh, it's a rotatable cannon. Oh, that is very cool. All right, so now we have two Narwhals. We're a bit overweight. Let's check out some of these damage numbers. 350 with a double shot. Cools down the target. Each shot will cool down the target even more, and you will deal 100% more damage. All right, 530 max. All right, not bad, not bad. With a fast reload, not bad at all. Not bad. 
Now they say the weapon deals increased damage when hitting frozen parts. Maximum is 100%. So you can freeze the target up to 100. And I'm going to test out if only the normal gets to deal more damage to frozen targets or if it's all the weapons in the game. Now we all know that fire damage or thermal damage deals 100% more damage to builds. Let's check out the vector. 7 damage per shot, right? Let's cool down this target a little bit. We're not using a reload module or anything. So that should be 40% cooldown. Let's increase it a little bit more. 60% maybe. Anyway, let's try it now. It's still 7 damage. Huh, interesting. Let's try out something else. Okay, let's try it out with the Yotun. Okay, that should be super cool now. Yep, there we go. Oh, we, we can't see how much damage we deal now. Oops. <laughs> Hold on, let it, let it just do it sting. And then we'll check it out. Yep, still 7 damage, even though the target is completely cooled. It will just lose a lot of resistance capabilities. That is uh, interesting. So I guess only the normal cannon gets increased damage on frozen targets, which is pretty cool. If you have someone with a Yotun on your team, that's going to be super devastating. The next couple of rewards are kind of boring. And then level 47, you get a cast side part, which looks like this. Very nice, flat and pretty decent. I like it. 47 durability and we have 15% resistance to cryo damage. Pretty nice. And is it a bumper? No, it's not a bumper. It's just a structural part. Very nice. After that, you get nothing special and you get a total of four cast side part though. That's pretty nice. I wish they would add more blueprint storage slots in these battle passes because yeah, we, we, we need more spots. Okay, next up, we have the Scaddy at level 53. And at level 54, we get more snow cutters, which we already got two of them earlier. Now, let's take a look at the Scaddy. I don't know why they call it a frost cannon. I would call it a frost thrower. Oh my god, it has a turbo. <laughs> what? <laughs> it has a turbo in... <laughs> That's crazy. So, this is a legendary... It's not a flamethrower. It's the opposite of a flamethrower. It's a cryo thrower or an oh, ice thrower. It sits at 1600 power score. Hit damage is on the low side. Fire rate is on the high side. Effective range is pretty low. Time to overheat is also pretty high. Ammo you get from the start is 365 pieces. The one you get from the battle pass has 536 durability because we have a 10% durability upgrade. Energy range 4. And the one in the battle pass gives you 5% more damage and thermal effect rate increased by 25%. And the perk says, as it affects the enemy, the damage of the weapons decreases down to a maximum of 25%. The reduction will be active for 5 seconds from the moment of the last hit. So, are you telling me that if I hit someone with this thing, they'll deal 25% less damage? That is brutal. Damn, that is, that is, that is actually pretty brutal. <laughs> These are the normal parameters for the Scotty. The durability is actually 487 and the future upgrades you can get is more durability, less mass, resistance to damage, more damage, time to more heat and cooling rate, thermal effect rate, 25%, the range, and ammo reserve. And next to a remedy, this is what it looks like. Pretty much the same profile, but it's a bit longer. It still takes up the same spots to mount. And they mentioned that you cannot stack these because it won't work. But that's what we're here to find out. Because if you can heat up the target, get more 100% more damage to them, and giving them the effect of less damage. Huh. Okay, so you don't really heat up the target. Okay, so that's why they made they mentioned it, it doesn't work. So the ice cools down the heat. Huh, interesting. Uh, let's check out something. Okay, so what if we use fire first? Nice and heated. And then we cool them down instantly with this. And then you heat them up again. Ah, okay. So I guess the mixed flamethrowers is not a good idea. <laughs> and if you're wondering, you can flip this all the way around. So yeah, there's that too. Uh, these cryo dogs are going to be insane though. All right. Now after level 54, you get some more stuff, which is okay. At level 61, you get the new engine. Forgot about the new engine. Now, this engine is massive. I feel like everything from the Hyperborea is so big. Your builds are going to be so chonky, which might be cool. This is the Finwheel engine. It gives you 4,000 tonnage and 1,500 increased mass limit. Cabin speed, 25%. Cabin power increased by 35%. Durability is 485. Energy drain, 1. And mass is 615 kilograms. And the perk says increases the damage protection of weapons and reduces the recoil up to 50% when the armored car moves at a speed from 60 kilometers per hour to a maximum of 110 kilometers per hour. 
Huh, so they say it increases damage protection. Kind of a vague explanation if you ask me. And reduces the recoil. I thought it would increase your accuracy. Wasn't that a thing they mentioned in one of the dev blogs? Let me check. Yeah, so on their dev blog, it says the new engine will increase the accuracy of all weapons and their damage resistance depending on the current speed. Those who can reach a speed of 110 kilometers per hour will receive the biggest bonus. And in the description here, they don't mention it. I'll let them know that they might have made a spelling mistake or something. It only says protection of weapons here and the recoil instead of accuracy maybe it's just maybe it is recall and not accuracy so we'll have to uh, ask what's uh, what's going on there if it's recall it's kind of lame if you ask me all right so this is our accuracy at 96 kilometers per hour i mean i think it's gonna be pretty accurate if we fire i mean pretty accurate right a little bit of a kick nothing too special and if we add the fin wheel engine so now we get the engine installed i wish they would show us a number instead of just a bar so now the fin wheel is installed. Doesn't look like our accuracy is increased. Yeah, kinda kinda hard to tell here to be honest. Let's try it out with a Reaper. A Reaper usually has a lot of kick. So this is with the engine again. Our speed stops at 116 kilometers per hour. You can basically still go forward while firing the Reaper. And to compensate the engine power it gives, we added a Cheetah engine. And if we fire now, I do feel a lot more kick, especially when turning, but I don't know, man. It's, um, maybe the explanation is wrong, but I can't really feel the difference. Yeah, so this one is kind of weird because it also doesn't give you a number of how much protection your weapon gets, you know? It would be cool if you could see if it's 40%, 50%, or 30%. It doesn't really matter, but it would be nice to see it at least. So after the fin wheel engine, you get more cast right corner and left corner. Some a new paint as well. I believe frozen ocean. So this one's a little bit different. Oh, this one's cool as well. Kind of like an ocean paint. I do like. After that, nothing special until you get to level 69. The special number. Where you get access to the Whaler Cabin. Which is a legendary medium cabin. So it sits at 2100 power score. Cabin top speed is 80 km per hour. Tonnage is 5600. Mass limit is pretty good at 12,500. Gives you 12 energy. Mass is pretty heavy. So it's a heavy medium cabin. And durability is 350. And the perk says reduces the impulse from hits to the armored vehicle and as well as from the weapon recall by 40%. The reduced impulse accumulates in the form of a charge, but no more often than three times per second. Upon activation, increases projectile damage and their speed and impulse by 25% for 10 seconds. So that's going to be good for a couple of weapons. I would say crossbows, but the crossbows don't really give you an impulse when firing, so it's going to be slow to charge unless you take damage. And the one you get from the battle pass gives you more tough speed, 3 kilometers per hour extra. Mass limit is also increased because we get extra mass and 10% uh, more durability. The other fusions you can get is more durability, less mass, uh, resistance, built-in radar, you know, the same stuff we always get for all the cabins. Now, this is a very odd-shaped cabin. It looks like some kind of submarine cabin, so these are the mounting spots. Very, um, very strange, but at least you have some in the front and the side, but not in the front, so, and on the roof, so that's good. Now, like I mentioned, it would be awesome if you could use it with the Toadfish, but look how slow the Toadfish charges the perk. Unless you take a lot of damage. If we add a Tsunami, on the other hand, whoa, <laughs> that's half the perk already, that's crazy. No more than four seconds. Oh, what about if we add two? Hold on. All right, let's see if we can fully charge it. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, cool, 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 cool. Activating perk. Of course, we won't be able to see it, but it's probably working. Can we get two shots before the perk resets? Yes, we can. Huh, that's nice. That's very nice. Now, I think a weapon that's going to be good with the cabin is the Reapers and the Millers. Yeah, the charge is not as fast because it uh, charges up every so often. But I believe you can get it even without shooting the enemy. Oh, that's cool. And then you should get a nasty amount of impulse and damage. Yeah. Well, the, the guy doesn't move, but 
I think it's working, guys. <laughs> After you get the cabin, you get a special new part with a USB-C port, which is called an armored slab. It is a special part with special parameters. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but the last reward you actually get is a profile icon of Hella, sexy Hella, and then, of course, a ducky as well. After that, you're going to get lighters, lighters, lighters. And, yeah, just, you know, the usual stuff you get to get to at least level 130, I believe. Yep, you need to get to a level 100 and... Is it level 130? Or 128? Huh, it looks like it's a, it's a bit different this time. In the previous passes, level 130 would give you 200 lighters. And then you could craft two of the legendary items. Uh, looks like it's a bit different, so we might have to do some calculations. But let's check out the armored slab for real quick. So it says the reinforced area of the part has increased damage resistance while the rest of it has no damage resistance. Increased vehicle durability by 93%. So this white part has, let me see, whoa, whoa. 85% bullet resistance, 50% blast damage resistance, 65% uh, thermal resistance, 65 energy, and 65 thermal or cryo. And this part is normal. Normal durability is 49, and it is pretty heavy, but it is worth it, I think. You only get two of them, though. All right, now let me show you guys what these armored slabs can do. They already showed it in the test stream or the live stream. So this one does normal damage, 21, and it falls off pretty quick. So you better, better hide this part. But this part, only three damage. Until we reach 45, of course, as well. But still, pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. I think the best use for these things are maybe hover protection or like weapon protection. Put the weapon behind this, hide this behind the build. And I think, yeah, that's going to be nice. That's going to be very nice. So that is it for all the new battle pass items. There's also a special brawl or a special PVE event coming out. And this thing, I'm not sure what this thing is. You get like pause or something if you do challenges and then you can participate in some kind of lottery. I'm assuming you'll be able to buy more pause or something. I, I have no idea how this works. The devs also could not really explain it that well, but maybe you'll get winners every week, every month, and reward 50 coins. So these are the devs. And let me see. Can I do... Can I, I can't do anything yet. So we'll have to see how this thing works out. Now, as you guys know, with every battle pass, you get a list of craftable special items or upgraded items. So these are the items. You can craft an additional scatty for 650 lighters. And the scatty perks are durability, damage, and thermal effect rate. Just like the one you get from the battle pass. Or you can craft another narwhal cannon for 650 lighters. And you get the same one you get from the battle pass. So you get a set of two, which is pretty nice. And the rest of the craftable items with lighters are hammerfall shotguns with more durability, damage, and fire. Fire rate, Nidhogg for more durability, faster reload, and less spread. Mammoth for less mass, faster reload, and projectile speed. You can craft another upgraded Jotun for 250 lighters, which is the same one as the one from the battle pass for more durability, faster reload, and refrigerant puddle lifetime. You also have a Quasar for 250 with more durability, faster reload, and faster projectile speed. You can also craft a Whirlwind with these perks, a Hot Red Engine with these perks, an additional Rune with these perks, an Omnibox Cabin with these perks, a Bastion Cabin with these perks, a Jawbreaker Cabin with these perks, a P1 Charge Generator with these perks, and a Prosecutor Cannon with these perks. And now the main recipes for the new items. So you got the Scaddy, the Narwhal, the Fin Wheel, the Whaler, the Yeti, the Jotun, and the Rune one. So yeah, that's it, guys. Sorry for the super late upload. I got access to this very late, and I went to the hospital to get my heart checked out. Turns out everything's fine, but I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, I hope I earned a like on this video and a subscription to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what I should try out first in tomorrow's video because I still have access to the server before the update goes live. The update goes live on Thursday, so in two days or one day. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.